Today, I'm going to take a look at North American Railcar Corporation's 4,550 cubic foot cylindrical covered hopper. I'm going to review the first three releases, and I'm going to give you a little peek as to what to expect in release number four. All right, let's start by talking about both the model manufacturer of this car and the prototype. So the model manufacturers, CNS models, did a version of this car back in the mid 80s, and by today's standards, it's really lumpy. But Back then, we were happy to have it. It was the first Canadian green car available. Intermountain came out with their version uh, early to mid 90s, and it blew the CNS model right out of the water. Etch metal roof walk, standalone parts, no comparison. So all the CNS cars disappeared, replaced by Intermountain. The first cars came as kits before they were uh, available as factory assembled models. Now, during the factory assembly process and the different runs of the car, quality control started to slip and you'd get cars that had bolsters on crooked. In fact, probably about 60 to 75% of the cars that I bought assembled, I had to pry bolsters off or do some filing to get them to work properly. So uh, in the 2000s, uh, between 2008, 2010, somewhere in there, I think NARC came out with this version. Okay, and this car, again, set new standards for detail. So let's quickly talk about the prototype manufacturer. Inner Mountain car, is based on a national steel car prototype. Three different factories made these cars. National steel car, Hawker Sidley, which is this version, and then you've also got the Marine Industries version, which Dark is also tooling up. So it's gonna be nice to have the three separate cars. Each one of the manufacturers has subtle variations to the car. This car here, the Hawker Sidley, has a short panel and a wide panel, a short panel and a wide panel all the way down the side of the car. The National Steel car, the Inner Mountain version, has the same size panels all the way down the car. The Marine Industry car also has the same size panels down the car. Slight end detail and slight roof contour details as well differ between the manufacturers. So, these cars came with a Microtrain's 1035 coupler here. This was released just before body mounting became the norm in end scale. So the first three runs that we're gonna talk about all have the Microtrain's 1035 coupler on there. The first run came with the big flanged wheels and subsequent runs came with this medium flange wheel. Big flange, no good for Code 55, so change your wheels out. We all know that you got Fox Valley options, Tangent, BLMA, Atlas, you name it, even Microtrain's, you can get these replacement wheels from them. So these wheels here with the medium profile flange work fine on Code 55. Now. I'm a body mount guy, so this car that we see up here, I've modified myself. This has got the BLMA wheel, and it's got body mount couplers on the ends, and the ride height's been dropped. If you're curious about that, there's a members only video in my members section. You can poke in and have a look at that. The car here, the detail is awesome, okay? So in a mountain cars, you couldn't barely see the detail on the sides of them. These cars have really nice uh, panel detail really awesome side sill detail. What blows me away versus the Intermountain car is the jacking pads, okay? So because the bolsters ended up crooked on the Intermountain cars, that's something that I really paid attention to. These things, nice and straight, but really well detailed. In fact, they even have pad printing on there. The underbody detail here for your brake piping, we've got two sides of the car showing and you can see that it is different on both sides of the car. Down here, we've got our hopper gates. These things are really well done. And on the bottom of the hoppers themselves, there's an additional panel welded on here, which is there on the prototype as well, just for a stiffener. So excellent attention to detail in these cars. They're absolutely fantastic. So run one, two, and three. Let's talk about that. This is a run one car. This is a run three car. I have a run two car around. And the main difference between the runs is actually just weight. So this car came in at 33 grams. Run 2 came in at 27 grams, and Run 3 came in at 24 grams. This car should weigh about 31 grams. So this one, pretty much bang on. Run number 2, I can live with that little bit of difference in weight. Run number 3, most people are going to be able to live with the difference in weight. However, I'm a stickler for trying to keep everything uniform, so I'm going to go in on the cars that I've modified. This one's going to be one of them eventually, and I'm going to add some additional weight, and I'm going to show you how you do that. You've got space in between the hoppers here. You can just drop in some weight there. Get this thing up to proper weight if it's something that's important to you. Other than that, these cars are absolutely fantastic. 
Now, run number four is exciting. Run number four, I was talking with NARC, and what they have in mind is body mount couplers with a proper 100 ton truck underneath it, and that weight issue, they know about it, it will be addressed. Really looking forward to seeing the fourth run with those body mount couplers, that weight issue fixed. That's going to put these cars right up with the best of the best in end scale. Now, if you're a Canadian modeler, model anywhere in North America, these can be seen all across the continent. They're definitely a must-have. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next video.